are about to call up our second interview, so we're really excited about that. Um, and so we would uh, like to call up Zoe. Yeah. <laughs> So Zoe's coming up today from Woodstock, and he's currently the co-owner of Camp Hacker, which we're going to get into more. So welcome, Zoe. I'm really glad that you're here today. Um, I want to just start off with you could tell us about a bit about your camp history. Well, I have uh, I'm a third generation camp person, so my family tradition is to go to Camp Kintip. So I grew up there, and same as my mom and my uncles and my grandfather, my grandparents actually. So. It's a long camp family history, um, and it was pretty great, sort of fulfilling to learn that I would have a full-time camp job. It felt pretty great mm -hmm. for me. What, what's your camp name story? It was my camp name story? Yeah. Uh, when I was first at camp, I'd come from a camp with another camp name that I hated, um, and yeah. so I sort of had the option to bring my camp name with me. I enjoyed the camp, I just didn't like my camp name. Um, and so on the first weekend I was leading staff training, we are always talking about camp names and helping everybody get their camp names. So I was talking with a counselor named Quinn, we were talking about how we would like to musicals. And so the discussion just did the path from there. So we went from musicals to Annie, to Daddy Warbucks from Annie, whose bodyguard's name was Punja. And that made somebody else think of Azim from Aladdin. And then somebody spelled that backwards, and my name was going to be Meza for about 30 seconds. And we we're sort of trying it out on people, and somebody's like, yeah, Mesozoic. And then Quinn and I just looked at each other and went, and there it is. Nice. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. That's history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, now, this is probably a difficult question to pinpoint one answer to, but what kind of profound effect has uh, attending camp had on your life? Well, I talk about the effect that camps had on my life all the time. It's part of my business uh, because of that. So it's had many effects. It certainly brought me my family um, and brought me my camp family as well. But uh, the biggest thing, I think, is what it was like for me as a kid. And um, a lot of people in this room work for me and know the story that when I was 11, my counselor, Ian, um, in my head, I was a nerdy little kid who loved books, didn't fit into sports, um, and was really quiet and reserved. But my counselor pulled me out at rest hour, sat me on the picnic table outside the, the cabin, and said, Travis, I just want you to know that I think you will be an amazing camp counselor. And he said, I appreciate all the help that you've given along this week at camp you've had, etc." And that moment just changed everything. Um, at that point, I could look at myself as a camp counselor from 11 on. I was like, what does a camp counselor do in this situation? And uh, just went from there. So. That's an awesome story. Mm -hmm. That's, that is awesome. Um, funniest camp memory? Um, <laughs> Lake Linko, I think that there's too many to mention. Right. One of my favorite camp memories is, a, is a, an amalgamation of many. But it's sitting at the staff table and laughing till I cry. Mm. Um, and I say any day in the world is great, and when I laugh until I cry, and the ratio of laugh till I cry days at camp is far greater than laugh till I cry days anywhere else. So um, that's that moment being at the table and wiping away the tears is definitely my favorite. <laughs> that's awesome. So since being the executive director of the Care Camp of Camps, uh, tell us what you've been up to. Well, I left camp to do photography full-time, become a full-time commercial and lifestyle photographer. And, um, <clears throat> pardon me, um, while that was happening, a lot of my camp friends who were also camp directors kept asking me if I would help them do, help them out with their marketing. And it turned out I started helping them doing consulting with online marketing because one, it was just Topaz and I running camp, which I know you two are living right now. There's just two of you doing everything. So online marketing became my role, and I loved it. Um, so I had those lessons that I could then apply to other camps. So I started out doing that for camps, uh, and then worked into doing it for other businesses, and now more and more of my business is just camps. So helping camps out with lots of things. Yeah. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about what we're a lot more about Camp Hacker and your vision for this camp. Well, uh, Camp Hacker started because 
Um, I wanted a way to give back to the camp community. I wanted a way to raise the level of professionalism of us as a, a people that work for camp. And um, my very first idea was based on the website Lifehacker, which just gave little tips and tricks for doing things. And I thought it'd be really fun to be able to go to camps and film little short videos of tips and tricks. And I did a number of those. Uh, and then um, and then I discovered podcasting. And, <laughs> and my so, life changed. And my life changed, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so myself and three camp friends have now for four years been running the Camp Hacker podcast. Okay. And so we've done 65 episodes on, we should focus on one topic that a camp director would get a lot out of for about 45 minutes, wrap it up with the tool of the week, everybody comes as it brings a tool, and, um, and that's it, and we do that every two weeks, so it's been, we should take the summers off because my three co-hosts are working full time at camp, mm -hmm. and don't have time in the summer, so, to, no. And Camp Hacker is growing and growing from there, there's lots of, lots of other things that go on. We have three new shows that we're working on, including all of which have Caramel and Lenny in them. So, um, <laughs> one focus just on leadership training and what happens at staff training and how to improve that. Uh, Iskis and Array are doing one called Because of Summer Camp, talking about the effect that camp has had on our lives as we have to leave and, and go on. And I think that's going to have some neat potential. Uh, and I'm doing a new show called One Thing I Did Right, which is just talking to experienced directors and saying, in awesome. your career, what's the one thing you did right? And then, What's my thing you change? Awesome. Okay, so keeping all that in mind, then, how can people get involved with Camp Hacker or learn more from yeah. you? Because uh, I'm sure most of our audience is camp alumni would be interested in some of that stuff too. Well, the easiest way is to go to camphacker.tv, and uh, that's where everything is, that's the base for everything, and you'll see the articles that we write. Um, if you're not currently in the camp industry, it would still be great if you could help us push the word with social media. Uh, Tobias and I were talking in the car on the way here, and, and our great passion is um, is this the effect of change that the camp has on people, and so we are we are full on doing everything we can to save the camp industry because we're worried that this experience isn't going to carry on to more generations, and so the, the best thing that everybody who's not everybody's going to listen to the podcast, and I'm, I don't have a problem with that, but if anybody can spread the word. Mm -hmm. Social media, that up, Twitter, that up, whatever. Um, or camp hacker everywhere, and that'd be really great, for, great for that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, why is Christian camp and your history at Glenmore uh, so important to you specifically? Well, uh, it's certainly the only place as an adult that I felt safe in the church. Mm. Um, it. It's the only place that I felt welcome in the church as an adult. There were lots of great moments as a kid, growing up in a small community church that I knew everybody and related to a lot of people, and it was part of what growing up was for me. Um, but I never found that in the wider church buildings and Sunday worship. I found that at camp. So that was why um, I think it's part of my adult faith, um, because of just what happened. That's great. Um, could you tell us about a staff? Uh, alumnus who had a big impact on you uh, as a camper or as a staffer? Well, certainly as a camper, um, although it was when I was at Kinto, um, I, I countless people that I still think are, um, that I just incredibly look up to. Um, the biggest, the person I think had the most biggest effect is, uh, is still a minister in the Presbyterian Church, and it's Reverend Bob Fairs. And I've told Bob this, this won't be a surprise to him, but um, I always wanted to be the camp director that Bob was. I wanted, I wanted our staff to feel, Bob inspired us to take on issues and do things and be active in our faith and community and all that, and um, I really wanted that to be our effect as camp directors too, what I saw and got out of um, growing up with Bob. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. That's awesome. Um, and finally, your wish for the campers and the staff of 2014. Well, I, I wish lots of I wish lots of things for them. I, I hope they get great things out of the summer. But I hope that they realize that um, that camp can be shared with others and should be shared with <coughs> others. Um, that spreading the word about getting others to camp is critically important to the long-term success of camping ministry, summer camps everywhere, uh, and that they 
um, care directors often have discussions about how um, it, families want to, to covet their camp and hold it in, as a secret. Right. But I think that, that if we can get our families to understand the more camps that get to camp, the, the better the effect will be. Thank you so much for coming. That yeah. was that was inspiring and lovely. Yay! <laughs>